fans, Privateer FX. Coming at you 4th of January 2019. Sorry I missed you guys yesterday. Uh, got some new computers here. And downloading all my stuff was a little bit more complicated uh, than I had intended yesterday morning. And because of the moves overnight, I just decided to drop it. But anyway, we're back here again. Non-farms today. Uh, um... So let's get right into it. Um, we have market services in Europe also, 10 a.m. Swiss time, plus Eurozone CPI at 11. This will be important uh, for the fixed income world. Boons are very overvalued here. Uh, 164.71 we printed and closed up at 165.04 today. We're already a bit lower. Um, so we got to watch this. If you've got fixed income on, um, you got to watch the CPI and the market services PMI. Remember, the euro went down on Wednesday because of the weak manufacturing PMI. So services PMI should be watched. Then, of course, we have non-farms. We're expecting 190. ADP came out uh, very, very strong yesterday. So I guess, you know, 190 and, and the, the employment component in ISM yesterday was was on target, unlike some of the other uh, components which were which were much lower. So we're expecting somewhere 190, 200. Um, I don't think there's going to be a whole heck of a lot of vol or noise with non-farms today. We also have Powell speaking um, later in the afternoon. This also should be watched to see if he's a little bit more dovish based on just the general negative mood that's out there in the equity markets. Equities closed 660, 660 points lower. The Dow did. Uh, S&Ps were about 62 points lower. NASDAQ was 202 points lower yesterday. A pretty negative day. Let's take a look at this chart. Um, you know, earnings consensus looks like it's now going to go down to about 160, 170 to 168 bucks for the year. This is lowered. This is 10 bucks lower than it was, sort of the 178 area. So we start getting into sort of value at 14 times PE. I don't want to get too uh, in depth into this because this is more of an FX channel. But we get we get into value somewhere between 24.50. Uh, and 2400 um, but of course you know that that's a long term that's a long term type type of trade what we're more interested in here is the mood of the day and the mood of the week uh, and for now that mood is, is is very negative obviously Apple is driving that yesterday uh, down 10 percent 142.19 close um, we got pretty good support here in Apple. Uh, Let's see, 142, 142.21, right where we stopped. So you you want to watch this 140 to 142 area. Uh, a daily close below that opens up a move down to 120, uh, technically. But there's every reason that there could be some support here. I'm not too concerned about Apple. Uh, 180 billion in cash. And don't quote me on that number, but tons of cash. Revenue's not going anywhere. Sales are weaker in China, but from what I read, from what I've read, China is is certainly less than three quarters of the revenue. Some people are telling me it's as low as 10 percent of the overall revenue. Um, seems very exaggerated, uh, but we'll see going forward. Back to FX. Uh, with this bond move, yields in the U.S. are way, way lower. It's kind of, it's gotten to a little bit of a hysteria zone here. We have 10-year yields at, let's see, where's our famous 10-year yields? 258.3. Pull up that yield chart. 
this has been a tremendous reversal from the 325 area obviously uh, very strong support at 250 but that said I don't think this is going to turn around uh, in one fell swoop DXY should um, should come come under continuing pressure here uh, we've had this sort of sideways momentum motion we need to clear one side or the other obviously 9564 on the downside which is approximately 113 uh, in uh, euro dollar or or uh, I think really even if we get back above 9715 um, we're going to be heading north brings us to euro dollar uh, we opened almost broke 115 next day we almost broke 113 now we're basically at 114 smack in the middle we're in this uh, patience driven consolidation still uh, no follow through yesterday of, of all days there should have been follow through with all of that euro yen selling we still couldn't get below 113 the figure so this now looks like sort of just a classic breakout we're going to use 112.70 on the downside, and we're going to use 115 to figure on the top side to uh, confirm direction in euro dollar. Dollar yen, as everybody knows, print, printed 104.10. This chart is wrong. Um, one of the silliest uh, flash crash moves since the cable that I've seen. Uh, the five minute bar kind of tells it all. When you see a bar like this, five minutes. It's crazy. So 108.15 to 104.10, that five minute bar. Um, that's algorithmic. That's stop losses. That's knockouts at 105, the figure um, from Japanese exporters, from what I've read. That's uh, all of the carry trades dollar turkey against dollar yen, so turkey yen. Czar yen, all this stuff got uh, destroyed, so the entire retail base uh, was weeping. Now we're back at 108.10, as if nothing happened. Um, where do we go from here? Not super clear. There's a lot of talk that BOJ will be protecting or slowing things down in the 106.50 um, to the 106 area. I'm not too worried about the BOJ. If this gets directionally ahead of steam, uh, it's dollar yen, right? I mean, we all remember when the BOJ was protecting at 110, 105, 100, 95, 90, 85, 80, and it went down to 76. Uh, this was back in, let's pull the monthlies up. This was back in 2011. For those of you who are a little bit younger than the rest of us, Yes, dollar yen traded down at 76 for months, not just for the day. This is a monthly chart. It traded down there for six months. So if dollar yen wants to turn, uh, it will turn, BOJ or not. Um, something to keep an eye on. There's no trade here for now. The chart is relatively destroyed. In fact, it's not even a correct chart, this. So it's quite hard to make a technical play here. You just have to wait for consolidation now in dollar yen. Main focus today is going to be on euro dollar, um, and we want a big outlier, or we want Powell to be either much more dovish or continue to be stubbornly hawkish. What else is out there? Dollar EM turned yesterday. Everybody knows I'm very skeptical of uh, EM strength, but we're not going to fight this. Um, we're not going to fight this now. This is like the consensus trade going into 2019. We obviously had all kinds of problems with the trade, or the market had all kinds of problems with the trade yesterday. Yesterday in Asia, dollar Turkey went up 50 handles, up to uh, 580. Um, dollars R went up to 1470, but then closed at 1430. Um, bearish engulfing. If we get a weak one today, uh, and if rates in the U.S. still stay lower, with oil, um, you know, below 
50. You could argue this is good for emerging markets. There's no doubt about that. Uh, I just worry about the fact that if we're heading into some global growth problems, um, you know, emerging markets have the weakest hand to play, so they fold first, basically, uh, in every poker game. So we'll have to see. I mean, this works if equities stabilize, rates stay lower, oil stays lower, and volatility goes down. Uh, and you have to answer those questions for yourself. Is this likely to happen or not? Aussie, wow. And th that again, that's not the correct low. I think 67.05 was low. Um, looks pretty constructive now. I mean, it really, you know, we're, we're now above this, with this massive tail, this huge wipeout. And the market is, is very, very short, Aussie. This is a conviction trade for 2019 as well. China's going to blow up. Aussie has to go down. Aussie looks like it could go higher. Don't have a dog in this fight, but it'll be interesting above um, above 70, 70. Aussie, there'll be some risk up there. There'll be some stops, so you want to keep an eye on that level. Uh, one of our long-term trades for the year is to buy Chinese equities. You can see this is uh, what we use, CNYA, which is an ETF out of the U.S. So this is basically getting long their currency and their equity markets. You can see we're almost, we're getting close to 50% from the highs. Um, something to watch as well. We, we, we dipped our toe into Apple stock and we'll be dipping our toe into China um, and India lower down. We like India between sort of 38 and 33 this year. Anyway, non-farms today, Eurozone services, Eurozone PMI and Powell. Get your goggles on. Uh, volatility is set to continue, we hope. And good luck today. Ciao.